In this video, we'll have a look at reversing time. Yeah, this is your V. Like with the hell would have When we're done, it's going to look something like this. Let's get into it. So here we have a simple scene with the first person character and a bunch of red cubes stacked on top of each other. Each one of these cubes has a box collider and a rigid body. So if we go ahead and hit play, we can run around the scene and we can click to create explosions. I'll have a download link for the project in the description. So in order to create the effect that time is rewinding, let's go ahead and add a script to each one of our cubes. To do that, I'll go under prefabs and find the red box prefab. Here I'll add a new component. Let's call it time body. We're going to choose C sharp and hit create an add. Let's now double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. And the first thing that we want is a way to keep track of whether or not we want to rewind time. To do that, let's use some keyboard input. Let's first off create a variable at the top. Let's make this public so it shows up in the inspector. Let's make it of type bool and let's call it is rewinding. By default, it's going to be false. Then inside of our update method, let's go ahead and make an if statement that checks if we are pressing a rewind button. So we'll go input dot get key down and you can use any key here. The key that I'll be using is the return key, otherwise known as enter. So to get that key, we write key code dot return. So when we first press the key, we want to set is rewinding equal to true, but we also want to modify some settings on our rigid body. So let's go ahead and wrap this in a function called start rewind. Then we also want to check when we release the key. So we write if input dot get key up and again checking for key code dot return. So when we stop pressing the key, we want to stop rewind. Now let's create these two methods. Let's first off create void start rewind. And in here we want to set is rewinding equal to true. And in our other method, which is going to be called stop rewind, we'll set is rewinding equal to false. If you want, you can go ahead and make these two methods public. This way we can access them from other scripts. And this is going to allow us to rewind each individual object through another script. We could, for example, create a rewind gun that would rewind the time for any object hit with it. We would simply go ahead and make these two public. It's probably also a good idea to go and make this variable private but for now we want to see it in the inspector. So now when we save this and hit into Unity, we should see that each and every one of our cubes has the time body script and that when we play and hold down enter, it's going to be marked as true. And when we then again release, it shifts back to false. Now in order to actually rewind the position and rotation of an object, we first have to keep track of it. In other words, we have to record some information. To do that, we'll use a list. Remember that whenever we use lists, we have to make sure that the system.collections.generic namespace is included at the top. So let's begin simple. Let's keep track of only our object's position. To do that, we create a list that is going to store vector3s for positional data, and we can go ahead and call it positions. At the start of our game, we'll then set positions equal to a new list of vector3s. So by default, there's nothing in our list. While we're not rewinding, we want to add new elements to it. This list is going to store the object's position over time, meaning that each element in the list is going to be the position at a given point in time. We refer to these points in time as frames. But instead of updating it every single frame, we can instead update it every physics iteration. That means that instead of adding new elements inside of update, we'll add it inside of fixed update. This is better because fixed update most often will run slower than update, and also on a fixed timer, so we won't get any issues with playback speed. Let's go in here and write void fixed update. In here we want to check if we are currently rewinding. If we are, we want to go ahead and do the logic related to rewinding, and so we can call some kind of method called say rewind. And if we're not, we want to record some information, so let's go ahead and make another method for that called record. We'll create our rewind method in a second, so let's create a method called record. And in here we want to go ahead and add new elements to our list. To do that, we go positions.add. Now this adds an element to the end of the list. That means that in the beginning of our list, we'll have the oldest positions and at the end, we'll have the newest ones. You can definitely do it this way, but I like doing it the opposite way, where the newest positions are those at index zero, because I like to think of it kind of like stacking positions on top of each other, where the newest place item is always going to be at the top. And so instead of using add to add it to the end of the list, let's use insert. And the index that we want to insert at is zero, which means at the very start. The item that we want to insert is our current position, which is of course transform.position. 
So now each physic iteration we are calling the record method and our record method makes sure to insert a log of our position at the current time. So now we are ready to create the rewind method. All we need to do each physic iteration is read the next element in the list. Let's go ahead and create that method. Here we want to set our current position, meaning transform.position, equal to the first element in our list, which is our positions list of index 0. And then after getting that position, we want to remove that element. And so we'll go positions.remove at, and we want to remove at index 0. So if we now save this and hit into Unity, we should get no errors. And when we now play, shoot, and then hold down return, we can see all of our objects returning to their previous positions. However, there are a few problems. The first one is, of course, we're not keeping track of the object's rotation. And so well, things look a bit weird. The second one is that while we're rewinding, Unity is still trying to apply physics on top. And so it's probably better that we set our rigid body as kinematic while rewinding. And the final thing is that when we reach the end of our list, we get an argument out of range exception because we've gone through all of our positional data. Let's start by fixing the error. What we need to do here is simply add an if statement, if, and we want to check if there are more elements in our list. So we'll check if positions.count is greater than zero. If it is, well then we can go ahead and continue rewinding. However, if it is not, well then we want to stop rewinding immediately. That should get rid of that error for us. So let's just try hitting play, shooting and winding back time, and we should see no more errors. Let's also make sure to set our rigid body as kinematic while rewinding. To do that, we need a reference to our rigid body. So let's go ahead and create a rigid body, call it RB. And inside of our start method, we'll set RB equal to get component of type rigid body. Of course, if your object doesn't have a rigid body, you can simply skip this step. We can then go to where we start and stop rewinding. When we start, we want to set RB that is kinematic equal to true. And when we stop, we want to set RB that is kinematic to false. Now, if we watch our rigid body to the right here, we can see that when I hold down enter, it is true. And when I let go, it's false. Finally, we can start keeping track of rotation as well. To do that, we could go in here and add another list for all of our rotations. However, I think a better way is have one list store objects that keep track of both position and rotation. So let's go ahead and create such a class. To do that, we go into Unity. We right click in the project panel, hit create, C sharp script. And now this class is going to store two values, our position and our rotation. Let's call it point in time. Now let's double click on point in time and let's modify this a bit. First of all, we don't need to be using any of the system stuff. We don't need this to derive from mono behavior and we don't need any methods. Instead, what we need is a public vector three storing our position and a public quaternion storing our rotation. We can then create a constructor for this class that makes it easier to set these values. We'll make a public point in time. This is going to take in a vector three. Let's write underscore position so that we can distinguish this from the position up here. And a rotation. Let's write quaternion underscore rotation. Now in this constructor, let's set position equal to underscore position and rotation equal to underscore rotation. Now when we save this and go into our time body script, instead of storing a list of vector threes, let's store a list of points in time. Of course, make sure to change the type down here as well. And let's rename the variable from positions to points in time. By the way, to do quick refactoring in Visual Studio, I hold down control and press R twice. It's a pretty handy shortcut. Now, if we scroll down to our rewind method, we can set our position equal to this point in time directly so let's instead get our first point in time and store it in a temporary variable. The variable is of course going to be of type point in time and let's call it point in time with a non capital P. It's going to be equal to the first element in our list. Then we can set our position equal to that point in time dot position and our rotation equal to that point in time dot rotation. We have the same issue when recording. We can't record our position directly Instead, we have to go in here and create a new point in time and we want to feed it first our position, transform.position and then our rotation, transform.rotation. And by the way, this is also why we created a constructor. The constructor allows us to simply insert our position and our rotation whilst creating the object. Otherwise, we would have to create it in a temporary variable and then change each value one by one. So now if we save this and head into Unity, 
we should see that our objects will keep track of both position and rotation. And so our rewind starts to look really smooth. Awesome! Of course we want to be careful that we don't try and keep track of too many points in time. Currently I have about 50 cubes in my scene, and each of them now have a list where every single physics iteration, which normally sits around 50 times a second, a new point in time gets recorded. That means in one second we'll already have recorded about 2500 values. That's in one second. And so you can imagine that if you leave this for, say, a minute, this value quickly becomes ridiculous. So what we probably want to do is put a limit on how far back in time we can go. Now most games have this as a gameplay thing. You can't wind back time more than 5 seconds. But you can see now that there's also a very practical reason why. So let's now go into Visual Studio and try and add this. And the best way we can do this is by keeping track of how many values are currently in our points in time list. So inside of our record method we can check if points in time dot count is greater than some value. Now normally fixed update will run 50 times a second. And so if we insert 50 here, we check if more than one second has gone by. And so if we want to check for five seconds, we'll insert 250. But of course your fixed update might run on a different timer. And sometimes we even have to adjust this during a game. So what we'll instead do is go in here and make a quick calculation. First, we can use time.fixedDeltaTime time to get the time between each fixed update call. And so one divided by that is going to be the amount of times our fixed update runs a second. So normally this is going to say 1 divided by 0 0.02, which is going to equal 50. Of course we can now multiply this number if we want to record for more than one second. We could for example simply multiply this with 5. So now if this value here is 50, this is going to multiply with 5, and so this side is going to say 250. Now some of you might notice that this can be written easier by simply multiplying this number into this number, and so we can actually simply write 5 divided by fixed delta time. However, this is currently a floating point number, and so we need to convert this into an integer, because the number of points in time we have is an integer value. And so let's write math.round. This is going to round the float that we insert to the nearest integer, and we want to insert the result of our calculation. So if you got confused along the way, here's what we're doing. We're checking if we have more points in time than we would get during 5 seconds. And if we do, well then more than 5 seconds have elapsed. And that means that we need to start overriding. And so inside of these brackets, we'll then start removing from our list. So let's call points in time dot remove at, and the index that we want to remove at is the bottom of our list. Because remember, our oldest entries are at the bottom. And so to remove from the bottom of our list, we'll go points in time dot count minus one. So now during the first five seconds of our record, we'll simply add new elements to our points in time. And when we get past the five seconds, we'll start removing from the bottom of our list and adding to the top. So when we now save this and hit into Unity and hit play, we can play around with these red cubes for about five seconds. And when we then start rewinding, we should see that after five seconds, our rewind stops because our system has no information about what happened before. Of course, you can tweak this value in any way you want. I'm just gonna make it into a variable at the top so you can do that easily. Let's make it a public float called record time and default it to five seconds. Let's then put record time down here. And finally, at the top, let's also turn our rewinding into a private variable so we can't edit it through the inspector. From here, I just encourage you to have fun with the rewind system there's lots of stuff you can do with this. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, if you're interested in more time-related stuff, check out my video on creating a bullet time effect. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in May, and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Stone Gamer, CMDR Firestone38, Thomas Vorley, James Callahan, Cyborg Mummy, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash